some of uh, my best friends are the ones that I uh, feel keep it the realest with me. Uh, they'll let me know if I'm doing something good. They'll let me know if I'm doing something bad. They'll let me know if, hey, you're doing a good job on this. They'll let me know, hey, you need to improve on that. And I love that. I, I appreciate that so much. Uh, but I was reminded today that I need to go to the gym. And it wasn't even because of, I look down and I see my belly. It wasn't because I've gained some weight over time. No, it was because my good friend in the NFL reminded me that it is flex season. And the Ravens, they are part of it too. Because their game with the Green Bay Packers in a couple of weeks has officially been flexed. It used to be at 1 p.m., but now it's at 4.25 p.m. Because the NFL, they, they took a look around the league and they were like, huh, these Packers, oh yeah, we know Aaron Rodgers. He's, oh yeah, yeah, he does his thing. These Packers, their defense has been playing amazing, even though they're missing so many people on defense. They're missing a star cornerback, a star pass rusher. They're missing all these other guys too. But they got a beautiful record. Then they were like, Ravens, whoa, they're, they're missing an entire team. And whoa, they, they got a beautiful record. We can't just leave this game. Yeah, we already got our Sunday night game figured out. But we can't just leave this game at 1 p.m. No, 1 p.m. No. We got to give people time to get home, get prepared, get relaxed, and get in the mood for some Ravens and Packers. 4.25 p.m. it is. So that game has officially been moved. So Ravens schedule for these last. Oh, man. Oh, that just hit me. And it just made me, like, really sad, man. Because I was getting set, ready to say Ravens' schedule for these last six weeks is 4.25-1, 4.25-1, 4.25-1 p.m. But I didn't realize that it's the last six weeks already. That is crazy, man. Wow, I kind of killed the vibe just now, man, and didn't even. Wow, that's crazy. We, I, we say it every year, man. Football season, it, it takes forever to get here. <laughs> it takes forever to get here. But when it's here, it flies by so fast. So fast. But anyway, when you look at the schedule, again, this Sunday we got the Steelers 425 p.m. The following Sunday is the Browns at 1 p.m. The following Sunday is the Packers game, which was flexed to 425 p.m. The following Sunday is the Bengals at 1 p.m. The following Sunday is Rams at 425 p.m. The following Sunday and last Sunday of the regular season is the Steelers at 1 p.m. So the Ravens, as of right now, um, that the Bengals game and the Rams game and the Steelers game could all possibly be flexed. That there's still time. I believe the window is, I want to say, like 17 days or so, maybe 21 days. I forgot what the window is that um, NFL has to flex games ahead of time. But, again, the Bengals, Rams, and Steelers game, those are subject to change. Uh, we'll see what happens. Um, so, Ravens have three away games and three home games left. It seems like Ravens have been, it seems like they've had a lot of home games, like a lot of extra home. Well, yeah, they do because the, the 17th game this year is the Rams game. That's the one that got added to the schedule. And then they played the Dolphins, so they had another home game then. But it just seemed like the Ravens have had even more, even like more extra. But anyway, um, like we've been talking about, they, they got to finish this season very, very strong. Um, yes, right now they are number one in the AFC which is great. We love it. Amazing. Awesome. But you got to be better. You got to be better. And, and you will certainly be all the way tested. Now, of course, we had the, uh, the episode of question from subscribers that we dropped earlier today. Shout out to everybody that came through for the live premiere. Sound like we're talking about like a movie or something. But of course, ain't none of these videos movies. Well, some of them be as long as movies are. But anyway, we had the, um, the, the premiere that dropped this morning. Uh, and... The title, topic, question, shout out to my guy Sean Ivey, man, appreciate you. Um, it was if Greg Roman, if the Ravens are going to sort of give Greg Roman a pass since you're dealing with this injury, that injury, that everybody's been hurt this year. So many people, key people, starting people have been hurt this year. Both sides of the ball, but certainly on offense. Of course, lost Ronnie Stanley for the year. 
um, lost Patrick McCarry for a significant amount of time, lost Ty Phillips for a significant amount of time. And these are, these are starters. These are starters. Um, so if he was going to get a pass, of course, Rashad Bateman, he had been out for a while. Of course, uh, Miles Boykin, he missed time. Uh, Sammy Watkins, he had missed a chunk of time. Uh, so uh, Nick Boyle, he was out too. And of course, J.K. Dobbins, Gus Edwards, Justice Hill. It's been rough, rough. But in that video, and I appreciate everybody that came through and shared how you how you feel about the situation uh, respectfully. I always appreciate that. But I know in that video, or any time the conversation even comes up about any of the coordinators, whether it had been Wink before last week, because you know, <laughs> before last week, even though the Ravens won, we well, we talked about Wink for sure. Like. He, he just, he was failing to adjust to what the situation was. Yeah, the Ravens were what? Seven and three at the time. And that was a beautiful thing, but he still needed to do a better job of adjusting. Guess what he did? Oh my, look what he did against them Browns. Even though it did seem like the Ravens were like, Browns, y'all take this game. We don't want it. And the Browns were like, oh, no, 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 no. Ravens, you take it. We don't want it. Because... The Ravens on offense. Oh, Lamar Jackson. Oh, that game was so nasty for Lamar Jackson. Oh, four interceptions and three of them are on you. And I've seen some people try to put one of those interceptions on Mark Andrews. Say, oh, well, Mark Andrews is the reason he the one that tried to that he the one that tipped it up. I think the one for jo John Johnson. He he the one that tipped it up and the Brown safety he ended up catching the pick off of that tip. Yeah, while that is true, Mark Andrews was just trying to make a play. I fought him none. He is not at fault for that. Not one bit. What is he supposed Do you want him to just give up and be like, oh, well, Lamar underthrew it. Uh, okay, well, uh, let me just sit here. No, you want him to try to do something. And he felt like, because th this is like, with us as fans, it can be easy to be like, oh, man, this player, in this situation, he should have done that. Oh, in this situation, he should have done that. Because we're sitting back. Even though we're not relaxed all the way, we're sitting back and we're watching from a fan's perspective. But when you're in there in the heat of the moment, you're out there on the field, you're out there under the bright lights, these decisions you make, they come so fast. They happen so quickly. And Mark Andrews, he was out there, and he's a, he's a pass catcher. He's a tight end. So he tried to make the catch. And earlier in the game, he had made a catch like that, where it was... Heavy contact, heavily contested, but he still made the catch. He was just trying to make another one. So, no, that three out of them four interceptions, they were all on Lamar. Now, the one with Rashad Bateman, um, again, that's y'all made a good point. Shout out to my guy Cam. He was thinking, well, maybe, maybe Rashad Bateman was in a doghouse after that, after that little tip-up that caused the interception. And somebody else was like, oh, maybe Rashad Bateman, maybe he ran the wrong route. And that's why he may have been in a doghouse the second half. Who knows? But we'll, we'll see next week. He, he shouldn't be in there too long. I'm sure. It, I mean, you, you can't put him in there too long, especially these games you got coming up. That doghouse, Harbaugh need to break that doghouse down and, and throw it away. Because you ain't got no time to be putting nobody in the doghouse for the rest of the season. You, you got no time for that. But anyway, um, the Ravens, beautiful record, 8-3. Top of the AFC. But in the video that we put out earlier, um, I know there were some people that they were a little upset. They were like, man, what like what, why are you guys complaining? And we're eight and three. No, no coach is ever gonna be good enough for you guys. No coordinator is gonna ever be good enough for you guys. You guys are just gonna complain about them left and right. What's gonna go on? You guys complaining, you guys complaining. And I, I, I keep trying to tell people, I, I don't know if I can make it any more clear. That it's not that we're complaining over the coordinator. It's that the, the Ravens, they have glaring issues. They have huge issues with the team. And as a coach, it's your position. It's your responsibility. If you're lacking somewhere, it's your responsibility to do everything in your power to overcome that. If you were a manager, if you were a manager and all of a sudden one of your uh, top people quit, they quit on you. They're like, you know what? I don't want to work here anymore. I'm done. 
or one of your top people, they were they were out for a while for being sick or something like that. Either way, if you were missing one of your top people, even several of your top people, and there was no way that they could come back right away, should the manager just, should they be forced to quit? Should they quit? Should they just be like, all right, you know what? I guess we ain't going to do good business now. No, that manager, because it's on them to manage. It's their responsibility to manage. Now, their employees still got to work and they still got to do their job. But it's important that that manager, like, all right, we, we're missing these couple of people. Those are some of our top people, some of our impact people, some of our best performers. Ah, but they out now. So now, you know what? Let me do everything in my power to make sure that we are the best that we can be without them. That's been the thing uh, with Giro this year. And early, early this season... He had actually been doing pretty good. But then the, the, the inconsistency started. They, they started and, and it's been weird. Now, this last game, that's, that was, that's Lamar. That was, that, was, <laughs> that, was, that was all Lamar. But we're not just talking about this last game because that's where a lot of people have gotten stuff twisted too. They think, oh, whenever we talk about Giro, they, 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 they make it seem like, oh it's, oh, it's just based off of the last game. No, no. When we talk about the coordinators, we talk about patterns. We talk about patterns, whether the Ravens win or whether the Ravens lose. We talk about patterns. Because I'm not one of those people that, oh, coordinator has a bad game. All right, get him, get him out of here. Player has a bad game. Okay, get him out of here. No. A coordinator is not going to call this fire game every single week. We get that. A player is not going to be on fire every single week. Minus Justin. Well, not even Justin Tucker. He's on fire most weeks, but not every single week. But when we see a, a pattern, that's what we call things in the question. And, and the craziest part was that we weren't even talking about Greg Roman being gone right here, right now. The, the topic question was, should the Ravens or will the Ravens give Greg Roman an injury pass because of all the injuries that he's dealing with, that the team is dealing with, but specifically on offense? And my answer to it was, well, you can go watch the video for the answer. But anyway, I just want to give you all a little update on that. So I love y'all team. Keep it clean. I really do appreciate you. Uh, shout out to the Ravens for uh, being considered one of the top teams. I mean, they the top AFC team by their record. When you look at them, <laughs> when you look at them play, you like, what? The Number one seed in the AFC right now? What? But... Hey, their record is what their record is. And that's a reflection of them. Despite the spotty play, despite the inconsistencies on offense, defense, and everything in between, they have managed to have a successful record of 8-3. and three, And that's a wonderful thing. You give a shout-out to the coaches, Harbaugh, uh, Wink, Roman. Give a shout-out to all the players, the whole team, all 53, even though it feels like all 53 has been a rotating like 120 this year because all the people they brought in and out, in and out, in and out. But they've managed to get it done. They've managed to get the job done. Now, of course, the job needs to be better. They got some cleaning up to do because we don't want to see them get cleaned up in the playoffs. And I mean, first off, they got to make the playoffs because that schedule, them last six games, ooh, and again, last six games. But those last six games are all tough. There's no gimme. There's no gimme in the NFL at all. I mean, Dolphins, they, they just showed Ravens that a couple weeks ago. There's no gimme. Now, Dolphins, won, they don't won four in a row now. Look how things flip-flop, man. See, the Patriots, Patriots were dead in the water early this season. Right now, they're sitting at eight and four. They right there. They, they, they that close to the number one seed, too. So, it's like things can change quickly in the NFL. This is why it's important that the Ravens finish strong. Now, usually in December, they, they do play good ball. Well, usually throughout the entire year because they, they're, like, they're not a losing team. They're not. And, and that's something that's just great. As Ravens fans, that, that is great. This team is not they, – they, they're not a losing team. They usually have winning records. They're usually in the playoffs. And, but now we just – we want them – we just want better. That's the same – only to put it in the simplest terms – we just want better. We know they can do better, but we just want to see them do better. 
We know that like they so many opportunities like that. That game against the Browns last week, L- Lamar's ugly game with, L- with Lamar through all those Staffords. In that game, like Ravens, they they, they should have blown the, Bron- the Browns out. Should have blown them out. Browns scored what six points? I think they scored six points. Because again, that that David Njoku that was not a not a catch. I, I really wish that the Ravens had those Washington football team and Seahawks refs for our game. Because they, they apparently know what a catch is. Or do they? So, uh, it was just a mess. But, it is what it is. So, nobody's really calling for this guy or that guy or that guy to get fired. Well, actually, some people are. <laughs> but, again, same thing we've been saying. Adjustments got to be better. Ravens, they, they got to play better, too. They got to play better. Lamar, I I did see something. I saw some like crazy stat that talked about, I think it was from Field Yates today. I forgot where it was from. It was some crazy statistic that talked about when players miss a game due to being sick or maybe due to to COVID or something like that. It it says that when when they first come back, oh man, their play is down. No, it's not due to COVID because Lamar didn't even have COVID. But they said when when a player misses a game due to being sick, their numbers are way down. Terrible. The garbage. And we saw that with Lamar. <laughs> ah, yikes. But it says that it usually only lasts for one game. And after that, they get back to normal. So against the Steelers, who Lamar, he hasn't played very much. He only played them twice. But <laughs> when he's played them, uh, them numbers have been a bit ugly. Against the Steelers, it perfect time for Lamar to really have a bounce back game he done he done thrown enough interceptions this last week for a whole season he he threw enough interceptions last week for the whole season for the whole rest of the year he should be done with those he done got all the interceptions that you needed to out of your system now LJ so you're good on picks but let's just he need to turn this thing up now for the for the remainder of the year because they they need him more than ever of course they I mean they've been needing him but now it's time. Again, your playoffs have already started. Your playoffs have already started. So let's see them make it happen. Team, keep it clean. I love y'all. I appreciate y'all. And we out.